Greetings, Judah. Let's continue on, you know. <laughs> I do apologize for that 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 interruption. You know, call came through, hit the wrong button, and you know, you know how it is. But you know what? Let me say this before we, we continue in. Yah has a way of keeping things aligned. You know, even when the enemy comes in and try to confuse us, you know what I'm saying, or to move us off track, when you have the Rahu, it's it, it's almost like a rubber band. It just it just contrasts and it just it just re guides you right back on that proper path. So I thank Yah for this interruption because a couple of things happened. First of all, yes, I did find James. All right, I found it. And, I, and that's important because I want, you know, again, for you guys to really see, those of you who are sincere, I want you to see and to know what the word says, what the book is saying. So you don't have to in any way be, you know, feeling like you're being misled or that you're being, or you're somewhat, a mist off the track confused okay so praise you that's going to be james 2 and 19 by the way but we'll go there but let's let's continue where we left off i'll be brief okay let's go <laughs> oh boy now how about that little challenge <laughs> all you spectacle wearers you know where i'm coming from who needed to read it Okay, James chapter 4, verse 4. Let's go there again. You adulterers and adulterists, know you not that the friendship of the world is enemy? If you're a friend of this world, you are an enemy of Yah. And the friendship of this world means those who love the things of this world. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh. Your pride. You're too proud to do something. You got too much pride to be chastised, to be corrected. The lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, the pride of life. Those that embrace that, reject Yah. If, you're abreasting, if your pride is what makes you decide things, if your lust is being, how you say, if your lust has been diluted and, 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 and manipulated, calling it love. <laughs> if your eyes see things and you can't resist, then you love this world and you're an enemy of Yah. So if your eyes it tells you what you're going to do and what you're not based off of what people say or think, that's what eyes mean. It's just another way of you worrying about what people think about you. So if you care about what people think about you, you don't love Yah. If you lust after the things that everybody else has, or you feel like you're missing out because you're serving Yah, then you're an enemy of Yah. And if you're so proud that you'd rather listen to the doctrines of devils and let those devils persuade you <laughs> to become an adulterer, an adulteress, when it says adulterer and adulteress, it's talking male and female. In the book, if you notice, in the cipher, this is not the cipher that I'm reading from right now. But the cipher gives you the right interpretation of what those words would have been. Amen? So he said, you men and women, you adulterers and adulteress. Because that's what most men and women are. They violate, they, they cheat on Elohim. You say, well, brother, uh, dear, how can I cheat on Elohim? By serving your flesh? By walking in your pride? By walking in your lust? By letting, making your decision based off of, you know, how people going to see you? Making you think that somehow or another you're a fool because you're following Yah? You're a fool because you're practicing the laws? You're a fool because you're missing out on all of this debt? and destruction that you consider talking about if you're walking after what you see fun fun you're more concerned with having fun and a good time than your soul and where your soul is going to end up at but let's continue he says whoever therefore would be a friend 
of those very things. Friend of the people of this world. If they're your friends, he said, you are an enemy of Elohim. And you can try to say whatever you want to say. It does not matter what you think, my brothers. Brother, it doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter. Think whatever you want to think. It doesn't matter. What matters is the word. The word says, if you love your friends who are unbelievers or who are hip, or not hip, well, I guess they are hypocrites because they confess with their mouth they believe, but their, their behavior has shows no sign of belief. Only that little piece and part, the little 99% on Sundays, Christmas, holidays. Oh, come on, y'all, we need to pray funeral when somebody die. Then all of a sudden, they're believers. But only until the event is over with. And then they go right back to their natural, wicked selves. Deceiving and being deceived. You are an enemy of Yah if you're living that way. And you need to accept the truth. Because maybe in accepting that truth, you will repent. You will turn away. And you would cut it out. While you still maybe have a chance. Because you don't know, again, when this world is going to end. I'm not talking about when y'all going to bring fire and burn it down. I'm talking about when your life ends. Because that's your end of the world. Doesn't matter. Somebody comes in and blow your brains out today. That's the end of the world for you. If you have a heart attack and drop dead, that's the end of the world for you. If you get hit by a car that's and, and, and die, that's the end of the world for you. You know, if you have an aneurysm, a stroke, and you drop dead, that's the end of the world for you. If you die in your sleep tonight, that's the end of the world for you. The same thing applies to your children and parents. So while you're sitting over there talking about, they always talking about the end of the world. They always talking about the end of the world. Okay. <laughs> you might get there before some of us. Ecclesiastes did say you could die before your time. And many has. Because they were arrogant enough, prideful enough, to say just what I just said. They've been talking about that. Y'all say, okay. Since you're a non-believer, I'm going to come get your ass today. Like you told that rich man who built the second barn. He has so much wealth. I got one barn, let me build another one because I got all this stuff. And you know what Yahshua said to him? Or what the Rahuk said to him? Angel, you fool. Your soul is required tonight. So all that planning you were doing for tomorrow, it does not matter. You're dying tonight. And that's many of Judah, Israel. You know, doing whatever they want to do because they believe you got time. I got time. Okay. That's what you think. You better hope you're right. But I do know one thing. It's apparent to every man to die and after that the judgment. So you are going to die. Say it again to you. You're going to die. You are going to die. Have you thought about that lately? Maybe the night when you're in your bed, just remember while you're laying there in reflection before you kind of fall off to sleep, if you're not drunk and halfway out of your mind from pharmaceutical drugs and whatever else, just ask yourself the question, what's going to happen to you when you die? Because you're going to die. What that's going to be like for you? That might be your wake-up call. Maybe you'll get up tomorrow morning and repent and turn back to Elohim. Since you're so willing to turn back to this wicked world out here. Many of you. Not all of us. Many. Amen. Let's continue on. Verse 5. Do you think that the scripture says in vain. The scripture. That's Jeremiah. That's Ezekiel. That's Psalm. That's Proverbs. That's Job. That's Jasher. That's the book of Enoch. Etc. He said. Do you think that the scripture said in vain. The spirit that dwelling in a man lusteth to envy. The jealous spirit, it wants to be jealous. And that's something else about a lot of you men, a lot of you women, you're jealous. Someone else is trying to live right, and because you refuse to do it, you have the audacity to look down your nose at them, to say evil things about them. Putting your name on Yah's unearned it is literally putting a, a, a big chain around your neck. And jumping in an ocean. I'm just saying to you. 
The book says, touch not my anointed, do my prophets no harm. What do you look like, you know, bad mouthing men and women who are believing in or standing for Elohim because they disagree with you? See, that's that pride again. You should just humble yourself and say, praise Elohim, they're living it, I'm not. That's that. And then deal with your consequences. Because remember, as the book said, be not deceived. Elohim is not going to be made a fool of. Whatever you do, it's going to come back to you. So if you reject Elohim, you reject Elohim's word, he's going to reject you. In this life and in judgment. Just so you know. But he'll remind you of that when you wake up from your first debt on your way to your second debt. And you're standing before him. He'll remind you of what you said and what you did. And he'll also remind you why you did it. <laughs> See, a lot of you say, well, you going to tell me what I said and what I did. And then he's going to go beyond that. He's going to tell you why you did what you did and why you said what you said. See, he knows those secret thoughts that you think nobody knows about. And that's what he's going to bring to your remembrance. I didn't want to do this because I didn't, you know, feel like, you know, it was necessary. So I wasn't doing it. I don't care what nobody says. I wasn't doing it because the right white man wrote the book. Our book tell us that that mighty men may have written the scripture, you know what I'm saying, but it was Yah who pronounced it. These are the words of Elohim. What are you talking about? White man did a damn thing, published it, but they wish they were smart enough to write it. If they did, then where are the other books that you can compare to it? Books of life. No matter what your situation is, the answer to it. Where are those books? They don't exist because man didn't write it. Elohim used man. Elohim spoke it and then men wrote it. But you don't care about that. I, I forgot. I'm sorry. <laughs> and your arrogance and pride, that don't matter to you. Some of you. Thank you that the scripture is written for nothing. He said, but he gave it more grace. Wherefore said Elohim, he resists the proud, but give it grace unto the humble. So your arrogance is going to get you killed. Your pride is going to get you destroyed. The book says pride is like witchcraft. I'm not no witch. You got pride, you're a witch. I'm not no idolater. You got pride, you're an idolater. You practice idolatry. You got pride. You're a witch or a wizard or a male witch. Your pride is witchcraft, sorcery. Your, your pride, you're going to do what you want to do. You don't care what nobody thinks. That's your pride. You are practicing witchcraft. You are in, in, in sorcery, idolatry, in the dark, wicked science, 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 sciences. Amen. Let's go on. Verse 7, it says, submit yourself to Elohim, not to the world, not to anything. Submit yourself to Elohim. So talking to you, brothers, your wives should be submitting themselves unto you. Unmarried widows should be sitting submitting themselves to headship as well. Men of Elohim. And you single women, you're in serious trouble. You don't figure out something. But you brothers, you're supposed to be submitting yourself to Elohim. What that means is that you live by the word. And when you get off the track, you get back on the track fast. And you stay on that track. You don't fall asleep, you know, at the wheel. You don't fall asleep while driving. Amen? You don't get distracted by whores, tramps, thieves, and crooks, and liars. And, and mandates in any other dating. You don't act cowardly because someone is going to call you a name or cut you off. <laughs> cut you off is another something that's really so sad. So many of you brothers have compromised yourself because some woman has threatened to cut you off from sex. I'm telling you, you better, you better straighten that out. You only have but so much time to figure that one out. That is judgment 
being placed upon you when you, you know, allow a woman to manipulate you behind sex, a sex, a sexual access. If she's a woman of Elohim, she would never deny her husband sex. Be the farthest thing from her mind. She would already know the book says she is commanded not to do so. But because many men out here are so cowardly, so afraid to tell a woman, no, I disagree. And if you don't like it, we're done. And that's that. If you don't want to obey the word of Elohim, we're through. I can't walk with you. My book says, how can two walk together except they agree? My book says, darkness and lightness cannot coexist. My book tells me that, that I don't love a world. I love a woman who loves that world. If she disobeys Elohim, she's going to disobey you. You can believe that, brothers. And if you don't believe it, put them to the test. Trust me. <laughs> it won't take long for them to reveal them true selves. That wolf will come out that sheep clothing very fast. And they will come out there fighting, kicking, screaming, cussing. Name calling, blaming other people, never accepting that the fact that it that, that it all happened because of his or her rebellion against Elohim. But that's for them to deal with that judgment. That's not for us to deal with right now. We're just calling it out. We're just, we're just shaming the devil. Amen. And those who follow after him. He says. Submit yourselves to Elohim. Resist the devil and he will flee. Usually when Satan tells you don't obey the commandments, you're supposed to say, get out of here, Satan. Get thee behind me. That's called resisting the devil. When the devil comes to tell you to do something that goes against the book, you're supposed to say, Satan, that's you. I know that's you. And I rebuke you. I resist you. And you can just wait. You're wasting your time. I am going to obey Elohim and him only shall I serve. That's what Yeshua said, Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. When the tempter came to him and told him that he would give him everything of, of this world. No, he told him, jump off this rock, this high place. Angels will catch you, no problem. He told him, thou shalt not tempt Elohim. And second, second he told him, thou, he, that he, I'm, I'm sorry, that was when he was offering him all the things of the world. You know, all your, offering him material things, offering him money, act, offering him promotion, offering him authority offering him power glory fame reputation recognition you know what he told him get out of here Satan I will worship Elohim and Elohim is the only one I'm gonna worship get thee behind me and Satan flee left and then the angels came in and ministered to Yeshua that's exactly what would happen to any of you who would take that stance for Elohim no weapon formed against you is going to prosper and everyone who speaks evil, Yah is going to judge them. And what he means by that, he's going to condemn them. He's going to kill them. And send them straight to hell, except they repent and they better fix what they damage. So they ain't just repenting and leaving alone. No, if you did harm to a brother or sister, you have to go to them and you have to acknowledge your wrong, ask for their forgiveness, and you need to restore that relationship. You're too prideful to do it. You're too arrogant to do it. And Yah say, therefore, when you come before me, I'm going to treat you just like you treated your brothers and you treated your sister. Just like you treated your woman and just like you treated your man. I'm going to treat you the same way. You are adulterers and you are adulteress. You male and female rebellion, witches, wizards, and liars, and thieves. Let's go on. Woo, <laughs> part two. He says, draw near to Elohim and he will draw near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts. What that means, wash your hand means you're supposed to clean yourself up. Purify your heart means that you're supposed to start listening to the book and Elohim, not yourself and your friends and your other and other influencers in your life. That's what it means by purify your heart. It calls you when you don't, you double mind. When you one minute you listening to Elohim, next minute you in the world, one minute you're a believer, next minute you're doing shit with unbelievers, he says you are double minded. In other words, he said you are walking in total confusion. You're an idiot. 
An idiot is a double-minded person. One minute they're going this way, next minute they're going that way. That's an idiot. Amen? And he says, you're an idiot, you double-minded fool. I'm just, I'm just breaking it down for you because some of you don't know what double-minded means. Double-minded is somebody who say one thing and they do something else. They glorify y'all with their mouth, but when y'all tell them to obey their commandments with their lifestyle, they say, hell no, I ain't doing it. That's called a double-minded fool. And you say, why are you calling me a fool? I don't say that fool in the book. What well, David said, a man who says there is no Elohim is a fool. He said, a foolish man says in his heart, there is no Elohim. He says, with your heart, purify your heart. If you want to purify your heart, that means you're denying Elohim. That makes you a fool. That makes you a fool. Goes on to say, be afflicted. We know what afflicted is? Make the sacrifice. Come out from among them. Obey the commandments. That's what afflicted means. Get uncomfortable. So what? Do what you maybe not really want to do, but you knew it was the right thing to do because Elohim said so. You obeyed. And mourn and weep. And let your laughter be turned to mourning and let your joy to happiness. But we know, no, I want my I want my joy. I want, you know what I'm saying? I want I, I don't want no heaviness. Uh-uh. I want it. I just want to be joyful and I just want to be laughing. I just want to have fun. That's most of so-called believers. I want to have fun. I want to enjoy my life. All right. <laughs> the book says your laughter needs to turn to crying, you know, and, and, and mourning, looking and searching for Elohim's return, praying that he comes back soon, and your joy should be heaviness, means that you're getting tired of this damn world, and you want it to end too. You're not supposed to be walking around here looking for joy and laughter. You're supposed to be out here waiting and praying and hoping and desiring Elohim to come and come back soon. Come back now. But you're not ready. That's why you don't, that's why you're not doing that because you want to, you love this world. You are an enemy of Yah, many of you. Not all of you, but those of you who fit with James and Sharon, the brother of Yeshua, by the way. You do. And you know you do. The book is talking about you. Not DFG. DFG just bringing it out. I'm just teaching what the book is saying. Showing you where to find it so you can have something to measure your life by. Maybe you won't go and die and go to the second death. Maybe you'll reconsider what you're doing. Probably not, but you never know. Not for me to judge that. Amen? But Elohim knows what you're going to do even before you do it. <laughs> so many of you, are, you ain't going to do it. <laughs> you're going to blow this video off, blow this message off. You know what I'm saying? And get on right back to eating your popcorn and waiting for your next whatever it is you love to do, can't wait to do. On your off day. <laughs> your time away. Amen. Y'all got something special for you. See, when they start dropping them bums over here from China and Russia and the rest of these so-called diseases that they got out here start coming in and, and really starting to kill you. And your body, your, your tongue melting, your, your eyes melting your socket, your tongue starts to melt in your mouth, you start getting sores all over your whole body. Down there in your private parts, stuff start coming out of there, men and women that you can't understand and, and causing you down there to become sterilized and you can't use it no more. Then you'll remember what you did. You'll remember what you said then. I got. I, I feel confident y'all going to bring back to memory your arrogance. Because he said... That little, that little sweet smell down there says you're going to be stinking. And you men, he said, your ass is going to die by the so You're going to kill each other. Dumb asses. That's so what Isaiah said, chapter 3. Go read it. Chapter 4, verse 1. It's right there. Amen. Goes on to say, you're supposed to humble yourself in the sight of Elohim. He said, then when you humble yourself, and when you're willing to obey the laws, his commandments, then Elohim said, I'm going to bring you up. I'll rise you up, sister. I'll make you the queen that you claim to be, but you're not. I'll make you, brother, the king that you claim to be, but you're not. Because you're only royalty if you obey the word. If you're not royalty, you're just a, 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 a impersonator. If you don't obey the book, you're not royalty. You're not no king. You're not a queen. You're just, an, you're just uh, how do you call it? You are just a, um, you know what they call that then? Imitation person? 
a fraud, a fake. I said it a moment ago, the right word. An impersonator. You might well be a transvestite. Same thing. You're just a spiritual transvestite. <laughs> you're impersonating a believer. You're not a true believer. Except you submit yourself to Elohim. And that means 100%. 99.9% .9 doesn't get it. Again, if you're serving 99.9%, .9, you are 100% not serving. That's book. Make the tree good for fruit. Didn't he say that? Or make the tree rotten. You either hot or you're cold. Amen. That's what he said. You can't be halfway in, almost in, 90% in, and then know you're either all the way in or you're all the way out. Simple as that. That's the book. You show me the book where y'all say, well, you could kind of come in, just come a little bit, and you're good. Where's that? Oh, I know what that is. That's your doctrines of devils that your these demons is who and your friends and your preachers and your teachers and all these other people that you went to to justify your wicked behavior, your rebellion. That's where you went, brother. You went found somebody to tell you you joined an organization that so they could tell you what you wanted to hear. You joined the, the right organization. I know like your deeds, brother. That's how they believe, and I believe like them. You didn't care what the book said. Same thing with you wicked sisters, so-called. You're used my sister, but you're still wicked. Showing yourself up, you know, with these organizations, religions, whatever they are, clubs. Just so that they can tell you sororities, what you want to hear. Not what the book says. Oh, you'll never do that. Uh-uh, you're too good for Elohim. You're too high-minded. Your pride, you're too puffed up. No way you're submitting yourself to Elohim. It ain't happening. Don't. <laughs> don't. And I'm going to tell you something again, brothers. Stay away from us, believers. We don't want your kind around us. You unbelieving sisters, stay away from us. We don't want your kind around us. You're a distraction. You're just, you're a torment. You're a bruised reed. Please stay away. And if you don't listen to our plea, we will aggressively make sure you understand we don't want you with us. You hate Yah. You hate us. Brother, you hate Yah, you hate me. Sister, you hate Yah, you hate me. And guess what? Because you hate Yah, I hate you. And all of you believers, please don't forget that. Loving this world is going to cause you to fall. A lot of you are falling because, again, you, you got these big old bleeding hearts. You're so empathetic. I just, you know, I just want, I don't want nobody to be offended. I, you never know if they're going to come. <laughs> you never know if they're not. So why waste your time? Not for you to save them. The book says, bring them the word. They refuse the word. Dust your foot. In other words, leave their asses alone. Dust your feet at the door and keep it moving. Isn't that what the book says? He said, you can't be friends with the world and love Elohim. I cannot say that to you enough, sisters and brothers. Leave them alone. Maybe they will find their way if you cut them loose. Most of them not find their way because you keep jumping in the mix. You want to play Jesus, God. You want to be vulgar, thinking that you somehow or another have the ability to turn away them from their wickedness. But you don't have that power. Only Elohim has that power. And Elohim is the perfect host he only wants you if you want him draw near to him book says i just read it. he will draw near to you otherwise he will tell you just like your brother about to tell you keep it moving hit the door and don't let the knob hit you in the ass when you're going out amen verse 11 say speak not evil one of to another he that speaketh evil of his brother is a judge of his brother. And you speak it evil of the law. Think about it. You got people who are talking about, I ain't keeping the law. He said, you speaking evil of the law? You going to judge the law? I thought the New Testament said the law was done away with. Why is James talking about it in the New Testament? I thought you said you don't have to keep the commandments. I thought they told you you didn't have to keep the commandments, sister. I thought they told you you didn't have to keep the law, brother. Why is James talking about the law right here? In your New Testament, I might add. Why is James talking about it if you don't have to obey it? He talked about it. 
because he knew it was important that you had to obey it. You don't have a choice in this. You either in or you out. You love Elohim or you don't. If you think you do and you're not keeping the law, you're not keeping the commandments, all you're doing is self-medicating. You are deceiving yourself, sister. Brother, you are in trouble. You are reprobated. In other words, that means Yah has done something to your mind that you can't even tell the difference between what's right and what's wrong anymore. You think what's right is wrong because you don't agree with it. That calls you a retarded, reprobated mind. Hey, I'm giving it to you from the book. He goes on to say, you speak evil of the law and you judge the law? He say, how can you, you, are, you judge the law and you are not a doer of the law, but a judge? He said, so you got the audacity to say you ain't going to obey the commandments. Right? Or you're going to judge, you don't have to obey the commandments, but you're going to tell other people that they don't have to too? So he said, you ain't going to do it, but you're going to judge it. You're going to say it ain't important. That's what he's saying here. Let me read it to you again. He says, but if you judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. He said, there's only one lawgiver, not you. It's not your decision to make. It's only one lawgiver. In other words, it's only one person who can tell you not to obey the law. And that person said, obey it. That is Elohim. He says, who is able to save and destroy? Who? You? That judge? Another with the law? Tell them they don't have to keep the law? He said, get out of here. You that say, today or tomorrow we go into such a city and continue there for a year to buy and sell and get gain. Look what he says in 14. He said, whereas you know not what shall tomorrow bring. He said, you have no idea that what tomorrow is going to bring into your life. And you got the audacity to be talking about what you're going to do tomorrow. You know, you got plans for tomorrow. You're going to get married tomorrow. You're going to get a divorce tomorrow. He said, you have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow. You're judging. And you, don't, you are not the lawgiver. You're going to judge the law and say it's not important. He said, who are you? Who in the hell do you think you are? This is what he's saying. Don't you know you're cursing and damning yourself when you do that, brothers and sisters? Those of you who do it, thinking you're doing something, thinking because you disagree somehow or another, that caused your hands to be cleansed? No, your hands can only be cleansed when you turn back to the law, statute, and command. When you turn away, your hands are filthy, as is your life. That's what it means. When you say cleanse your hands, it means get your life right, get your life together says, you don't know what tomorrow is going to be. What is your life? He said, your life is a vapor that appeared for a little time and then going to vanish. I told you in the beginning of this video, you're going to die way sooner than many of you think. Oh, I don't know. They've been saying the end of the world. I know when I get 50, I'm going to live to be 70. When I get 80, I'm going to retire. Son, daughter, brother, sister, you have no idea when you're going to die. You think tomorrow is promised to you. Tomorrow is not promised to you. So why are you planning for tomorrow? You should be living for today. In other words, you should be having your soul right today, knowing that if Elohim comes today, I'm going to be ready. And if he comes tomorrow and I'm still here, I'll be ready tomorrow. But I'll be damned if I'm going to leave. I'm headed to tomorrow and leaving Elohim behind. That's called a death sentence, a second death. He said, for God ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live. I'll do this or that. But no, you want to rejoice in your boasting. You proud. You're going to brag. He said, all rejoicers in their pride, in their own boasting, in their own righteousness, he said, you are nothing but evil. He said, all that rejoicing you're doing, oh, Jesus got me. He don't know. God know my heart. All that shit. He said, you're rejoicing and you're evil. It don't take all that. He said, you're a liar. It does. You're rejoicing because it doesn't. He said, your rejoicing is evil. All your rejoicing, all of that smack, all that crap you're talking. He said, you are evil. You're bragging, you're boasting. Your resistance, your hatred for the, for the law. James said the law, you don't judge the law. Only Elohim judges the law. You obey the law. You submit to the law. But no, you ain't going to do it because you, the liars have told you it was not important. And it is the most important thing you can do with your life. 
It is the most important. If you don't want to go to the lake of fire and burn for eternity, it is the most important thing that you can do, sister, brother. And you sitting over there acting like it doesn't matter. You are spiritually in adultery because you are serving the world versus Elohim. The world don't obey the law. The world don't keep the law. The world don't obey the commandments. The, law, the world don't keep the commandments. The world don't obey the statutes. The world don't keep the statutes. Only the believers do that. And if you reject it, you love the world and you're a part of the world and you're going to be damned with the world. And you need to know that. I'm not judging you. I'm telling you, what the, I'm just reading to you what the book is saying. This, you probably wouldn't read it if I didn't. Some of you still ain't going to read it. Therefore, him to know it to serve Elohim and do it not is sin. To those who know to keep the law and don't keep the law, to you is sin. Because only the law is good and just and fair. And if you reject the law, you're rejecting Elohim. So in other words, you're in evil. The opposite of good is evil. When you reject Elohim, you're rejoicing in this world because you're having a good time. You want to have a good time. But your book says evil. When you say you're going to judge the law by not keeping it or decide if the law applies or don't apply, it says, who are you? Who are you? Look at verse 11. He says, you got the audacity to speak evil of the law and judge the law? But you don't do the law, but you're a judge? <laughs> Whew, brothers and sisters, I pray, I pray that somebody, I'm not praying for you. I just pray that somebody loves you enough to tell you what I'm telling you. I just pray that your ears open <laughs> but it's your decision ultimately I don't I really don't give a shit if you go to hell or not I'm just I can't tell you that lie if you were a child innocent child yes I would I would I would give my life but I wouldn't go to hell for my child but I would give my life trying to get my child into the kingdom of Elohim 12 13 20 40 45 48 50 60 51 50. please take your ass to hell if that's where you want to go you can be assured DFG won't be there with you. And I make a conscious decision not to go to hell and burn for eternity. That's my decision I'm making for myself. What you do with your life and afterlife, that's on you. But you deserve to be warned. You, be, you deserve to be told the truth. But nobody has a right to force it upon you. If you don't want to do it, do what you do. <laughs> Keep doing what you do. But you better you better live it up. But to remember, tomorrow ain't promised. And all that stuff you think you got that's going to take care of you when all shit hits the fan, <laughs> y'all might come and get your ass before that. Just like you told that, that, that man who built the second barn. He said, you fool. I don't know why you were wasting time saving your money. I don't know why you were wasting time trying to buy a new house or a new car, whatever the hell you were buying. Your ass belongs to me tonight. What happened to many people this Friday night? It might even happen to you. The question is, what you going to be doing, what you have repented, what you have turned back, what you have made amends as Yah told you to? Or are you just going to keep on just walking out here, you know, taking your chances, as they say? Playing Russian roulette with your life. One of these, keep on pulling that trigger. Eventually, that one bullet in that chamber, it's going to come out. And your brain's going to end up on the ground. Keep on playing with Elohim. Keep on, you know, you know, playing with the word. Keep on playing church. Keep on playing Christian. Whatever the hell else you play. One of these days you're going to find out <laughs> that you should have been a lot more serious. You should have been mourning. As the book said. <laughs> what he said? You should be mourning. Instead of laughter, and what else he said? <laughs> Instead of your, your 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 joy, you should have had heaviness. But not you, <laughs> at least some of you. But those of you who trust Elohim, those of you who are standing, keep on standing. It's almost over with. Your brother's telling you it's almost over with. Look at what's going on in the world. Look at what the earth is doing. 
The Ur is speaking out and crying out to Elohim. Come, 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 come. Mankind is doing everything in its power to wipe out everybody. And if you're in America, you would just don't, you, don't, you have no understanding how much danger we're in. You have no idea what's coming. And the only thing that's going to protect you is the Rahuk in you. And the Rahuk is not going to be in an unclean temple. So if you're disobeying the laws, the statutes, and commandments, and do you are there's going to be no protection when Yah comes. Yeah, your friend might protect you. Yeah, she or he might protect you for a moment. But see, when shit really comes and Yah start dropping that fire on him, why, you think why he's burning, he's going to be saying, oh, yeah, protect my wife? No, that fool going to be screaming and hollering and kicking. He ain't going to be thinking about your ass. So you had better be thinking about your own butt, sister, brother. For all that love she telling you, <laughs> be careful with that shit, okay? Most of these women don't know nothing about how to love nobody. They just say it. <laughs> They tell your ass they love you. And next week, them jokers be laying in the bed with your best friend. Or that old devil in their past. But they loved you last week, though. <laughs> see what I mean? Sister, you see what I mean? <laughs> Are you guilty of that? Is that you? <laughs> Maybe not. Who's to say? But there are many women out there doing it. And there are many men out there doing it, too. Just not exclusive for these women. That's why I say, don't trust these devils. Don't trust these wolves. Make them, force them to show you they love Elohim by their lifestyle. And if they won't show you by their lifestyle, leave their ass alone. <laughs> she has a message if you care enough about it. I think it could help someone. But mostly, I hope you allow it to, to, to give you, to medicate your heart, your soul. All right? Hope. <laughs> but at the end of the day, shit, that ain't on you. I did my part. I told you. I'm done. My hands are cleansed. DFG, talk to you later. Bye now.